today I'm going to be reviewing the Spiros M4. This is a little pocket torch, a little mini thrower with a TIR lens that I received in the mail today and uh, has some really interesting, uh, impressive specs, 652 meters of throw, produces 1,320 lumens. And the LED, I had a look online, I had to scour the internet to find out what it was because it's not actually listed on the back here. It just says advanced high performance LED. Now apparently it's referred to on a couple of forums as the Yin Ding 5050 LED. So interesting thing about it is that it has a round die and normally with a lot of these LEDs you find that they have a square die. So quite interesting and um, I'm excited to see how it actually performs. On turbo you get over 100,000 candela and on the eco mode 75 candela which is 0.5 lumens so good to see that it has some type of moonlight mode in there as well i do find that a lot of torches are lacking that moonlight mode especially when you get up during the night you don't want something that's too bright impact resistance 1.5 meters ip68 waterproof pretty standard but uh, you know some flashlights don't have that so it measures about three inches in length and the head 1.1.59 inches in diameter tube is about one inch at eight centimeters long so that's pretty small for a light that throws so far 652 meters let's open it up and have a look at what's included and here it is out of the packaging the Spiros m4 and i'm just so surprised how small this thing is look at that look at that little little torch in my hand it's, uh, I mean, considering that this thing throws 650 meters, I just can't believe it. I've got to try it out, but certainly the head is uh, significantly larger than the body. So nice and clear. You can see inside that uh, TIR lens. And, um, you know, just for comparison's sake as well, I've got my Sofern IF22A uh, next door. And that's, geez, it's about half the length, almost half the length of that one. And the heads are... Uh, just about the same, but the IF22A with about a four centimeter head and the uh, Spiros M4 with about 3.9. So I'd say they're pretty similar. And um, the only difference is that the M4 looks a lot more compact. Look at that, they've managed to fit in that whole TIR in just such a, a small little package. It's not as long. So it comes with a USB-C charging port. You've got um, a lanyard here with a few O-rings as usual good to see that there's some spare parts in there you've got the manual as well gives you some instructions battery installation so that's the 18350 cell looks like it just unscrews underneath the head you've got the charging port here on the side of the flashlight um what else do you have you've got the oh here you go you've got the button Fantastic. It's probably a bit of insulating film on the inside I've got to take off. So here are the instructions and it looks very comprehensive. Usually you only get about a half half page or uh, just a little blurb on one of these pages and the rest of them are translated into other languages. So side switch has a whole bunch of functionalities here, which is interesting. I'll need to check that out and study that a little bit. Um, it's got instructions on charging power indicator as well. Also got some information about the warranty. There's a five year warranty here. Very well put together. I like this little package. It's got the specifications here on each mode, kind of the same stuff as on the back of the light. And I'm really quite impressed with the build quality here. Just sort of turn this around so you can see it closer under the camera. Uh, the the anodizing just looks flawless. It's that same type of anodizing that I've seen on a few of my other flashlights, that smooth, nice sort of smooth anodizing. No chips or imperfections at all. There's some little cooling fins that are cut out to the side as well, which is uh, which is good for the LED is housed just underneath there and the TIR lens. The button appears, uh, feels to be slightly rubberized on there as well, but it's uh, it's kind of like a harder sort of rubber. So interesting. And um, there's a little button, little area there for the lanyard, some details here, some little details here on the, looks like an internal serial number. And we can open up that charging port like that as well. So good to see there's some nice, it's got a nice little seal there, especially when you, you want to make sure that there's a decent seal if you're going to take this near water. So let's open it up and have a quick look at what we've got. Okay, that comes open quite well. The threads are not square cut. 
lubricated quite well though. And there you go, you can see the driver and uh, the Spiras writing just underneath there. Quite nice. Looks to be a Spiras branded battery 18350. It looks very similar to the 16340 actually. But uh, 1,100 milliamp hour battery, that's pretty high capacity for such a small battery. And let's have a look here, 6 amps, so I think that's a 6 amp discharge, so high discharge current. It looks to be a protected cell, you can see here, built-in circuit board prevents overcharge, so that's good, over discharge. Um, so it is a protected cell. Let's just pop everything back together again. Okay. Screw this back into the head. Okay. Yeah, this is really quite impressive. I wasn't expecting this level of quality on the finish. It's just such a nice, smooth finish. I wonder if you can unscrew it. No. Oh, actually, you can. Okay, this is good. I wasn't able to do that with my I have 22A, so it does unscrew. Look at that. I'm probably not gonna. I'm probably not gonna go all the way. You can see there's a lens, there's a glass lens as well, covering the uh, the TIR lens under. So I think that's also a good sign because you know the TIR lens they are often made of polycarbonate and you don't want to scratch that because it's going to impede that light from getting through. I'm really liking this little throw already but I wonder how it's going to perform and I'll do a few beam shot tests and also do some comparisons so you can see how it performs and uh, make a decision for yourself. Spiras M4 it's a really tight hotspot and diffused beam. The beam's a little bit warmer as well. I really like the beam profile of this. Okay. Spiros M4. What a useful spot beam, it's nice and smooth as well. It's starting to get a bit of rain now. It just manages to tint and uh, hit some of the reflective glass that Ferris wheel. Spiros M4.
Welcome back everybody. So I want to talk a bit about my observations, my final observations of this light and uh, we'll go through some of the things I liked and some of my considerations, improvements as well. And I'll start off by saying that this light really exceeded my expectations. When I first opened the box, I wasn't expecting much. I was quite surprised by the shortness of the thrower as well. thought it looked kind of cute, but after a few weeks of using the light, I found it so easy to carry it around. It's got this jaw-dropping throw on the turbo mode. I used it down a few side streets and alleys, and they just throw all the way down to the end, but also produce enough spill to see where you're going. Bring it out to rural areas and in the country, it has even more impressive effect, especially when there's no light around. It's got one of the nicest beams I've seen on a TIR lens, and I think it might have to do with the actual LED, which has a round die, according to the reports. There's a nice blend between the hotspot and the flood so it's really smooth there's no rings or no sudden adjustment i guess from that hot spot so i think it's got a very very nice smooth beam beam looks nicer in my opinion than the if22a it's also warmer but on the greenish side so like i mentioned before massive throw and brightness for its size this thing produces 1300 lumens throws for 669 meters. I actually tested this on my Opal light meter and I measured 111,975 candela and in terms of the tint 4,356k. So pretty close to specs but I was actually impressed by the candela specs which was over the specs on the data sheet and all in all is quite impressive for a seven and a half centimeter flashlight. Another pro is that the light is truly pocketable. The head is a bit on the wide side. It's four centimeters in diameter, which is the same as the IF22A, but surprisingly, it fits nicely in almost any pocket. You might have some trouble with some tighter jeans though, but to get this amount of throw in a flashlight of this size, 
it either needs to have a large reflector or you're looking at LEP technology. I really like the UI. It has five modes. So eco, low, medium, high, and turbo. I think a decent low mode is important for me, especially with a lower capacity battery. And this battery, the 18350, is a 1,100 milliamp battery. And I find that the low mode, even at 60 lumens, is more than enough for most situations. And under that setting will last eight hours. Medium is decent too. You get two hours usage out of it. In turbo, you get just over an hour of runtime. So it shows that this light is more than a novelty pocket rocket that fizzles out after half an hour. You can actually use it for a longer duration on the lower modes. Another big pro I have to mention is the premium construction. So this HA3 anodizing they use in this flashlight is definitely a step above all the other lights that I have. I know there's different forms of anodization, different thicknesses, feels smoother and more even on this flashlight. It doesn't have that glossy look, but more of a clean matte black finish that seems more durable. Carried this light around with a bag of a few of my other lights and found a couple of them have some wear marks on the bezel, on the tail cap, even on the sides of the flashlight, but there's not even a scratch on the body of the M4. Speaking of which, the body is milled to perfection as well. No unevenness or imperfections, even in these little cooling fins, sometimes one of the tells with the budget lights, you look into these fins and there's slight burrs and imperfections in there. If you look very closely, nothing like that here at all. The UI has a lock function, which is useful. I have found that this light turns on in my pocket if I'm not careful. So if you press and hold that button for a few seconds, it will lock that light out. And if you press it, you'll get this kind of red flashy button. So I'll demonstrate it now. There you go. It's locked. And so now you just, every time you press it, this button will flash you just click that i think three or four times and, and it's uh, one two three four and it reactivates it again okay um, you can also use the mechanical lock so just unscrew the flashlight like that and you have the same effect i think this is important i find that the side switches can sometimes turn on in your pocket so especially with a light that has over a thousand lumens. For safety reasons, best to have one or both of those lockout features. The USB-C charging is a welcome addition. I really love the flashlights I have with that USB-C. I think they should all have them based on the ease of use. And you know, you may not want to carry a full-blown charger with you as well. The flashlight comes with a protected 18350 battery. I think that's great. A lot of the lights that you get these days don't come with protection boards in there. So that's good for added safety. In terms of improvements and considerations, the tint is greenish. But because I'm red-green colorblind, it doesn't seem so noticeable to me. It's definitely a lot warmer than the beam of my Sophone IF22A, though. I have kept it in my pocket with all kinds of stuff, including keys. And like I said, haven't noticed any scratches on it. This little pocket rocket reminds me a bit of the Manka MC13 and as well as the Thrunite Catapult Mini. They're all similar TIR-style throwers that have candela figures between 111,000 and 129,000. Similar size as well with the Spiros M4 on the smaller side. However, the unique thing about the M4 is that it produces 1,300 lumens, and that's approximately 50% brighter than its competitors. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about this flashlight. The link to the Spiros website and the M4 is in the description if you'd like to check it out. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate if you click the like button and remember to subscribe if you want to see more reviews.